Driving at home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. All right, guys, well, we're here with another Driving at Home. At the end of 2023, it's hard to believe that it's almost the end of another year gone by. I know, but I think we're all kind of happy to yeah. let 2023 go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cautiously looking forward to a new year. Um, here with Dr. Claire Losey, of course. And today's episode really is focused on just kind of recapping what the experiences have been in 2023. So, Indeed. Claire, talk to us about what, how you would characterize 2023. What's the headline for you? I would say it was a little bit of a bumpy ride. Yeah. I think we can all agree that there was maybe a, a nice little bit, way to put it, <laughs> a little bit more volatility than we otherwise would have liked or maybe even anticipated. Of course, the headline was just inflation, yeah. you know, and although it continued to decelerate, 2022 and 2023 together marked the fastest rate hiking cycle that we've seen in about four decades. Yeah, so, I'd like to see the graph that shows when we said a recession was coming, when we said one was not the not even just us, <laughs> but the world. You I know, mean, and very temperamental. Yeah. yeah, it just felt very kind of back and forth, which I'm sure was the experience of the agents trying to navigate those conversations with their clients as well. Exactly. So I think just with the fact that we are now kind of over that hurdle, the rate hiking cycle is firmly finished, yeah. as, at least as long as we know. Yeah. But, you know, the last rate hike was in July of this year. So I think we can certainly anticipate that it's over and two, we can look forward with great anticipation to hopefully some rate cuts in 2024, yeah. maybe to the tune of 50 to 75 basis points. I think but, we're ending the, the year on a high note with the the comments coming out of the Fed of late, right. just you know, looking towards um, the soft landing that we had hoped for all right. along, and then potentially kind of those uh, rate cuts and, and, and in, increase in the things that we're excited about into next year. Right, too, and, and just their perception that they believe inflation will continue to decelerate and reach their 2% target. So of course it's still, a moving target, mm -hmm. so to speak, in a lot of ways. But overall, the sentiment is a lot stronger. And as we were touching on at the beginning, there's much less variability with respect to kind of the direction of rates and the magnitude of changes and whatnot. Right, right. So what are the trends that you would want to focus on in recapping 2023? So of course, just the higher mortgage rate environment. Yeah. That's, that's no secret to any of us, but those really aggressive Fed rate, rate hikes, you know, were hand in hand, went hand in hand with higher mortgage rates. And of course, anytime the mortgage rate increases, home buyers purchasing power decreases. So yeah. that's kind of a fancy way of saying that the maximum home price affordable to them declines. Yeah. And coupled so fast on the tail of the rapid rise in, in value and pricing that had occurred through the pandemic. Right. That that's just a hard it really was the perfect really storm. hard dynamic for yeah, buyers. It was really the yeah. perfect storm this year to, you know, we of course we saw that moderation in sales activity yeah. in home prices and that was really of, of no surprise, right? When when rates are higher and home prices are still elevated relative to pre-pandemic levels yeah. and to, you know, that. And abruptly, you know, yes. like really rapidly too, as part of it, we weren't even coming up to speed with what we should expect. Right, right. And all the kind of the excess demand that was, that had been met during the pandemic. So right. overall, just of course, rates were a really focal point, higher rates were a really focal point of 2023. Yeah, I'd like headlines to not include rates next year. <laughs> Let us hope. <laughs> to some degree, even that would be better than, than some of what we've experienced this year. Um, what, else, what other trends did you observe for this year? So just continued constraints with respect to affordability mm. in the Austin market. Of course, rates, those are a national headline, right? But affordability here in Austin just continues to be a challenge. And that's something that we touch on in the truth about Austin's missing housing. We have two parts, two segments to that report, but if if listeners are interested, they can look for it our, on our website and just um, kind of see the distribution of the shortage of homes by different price cohorts, racial and ethnic groups across yeah. different city council districts, whatnot. But anyways, back to the point. <laughs> um, just, you know, the, the declines we saw in affordability with higher rates and still elevated home prices, you know, again, the coupling of that kind of being the perfect storm. And I think it's a weird 
a dynamic and kind of experience for the agents to some degree because we had a market that felt like it was so abruptly slowing. And, and yet, Abor keeps saying, and, and we'll continue to say because it is factual, that we lack the housing that we need to meet demand, that that's putting pressure on affordability. It was a, you know, it felt like an opposite experience on the ground to some degree for the agents, but I think that's the importance of the research that we're producing to some degree as well, is that it's setting fact and anchoring uh, the housing market, in fact, about what is really happening in terms of our housing capacity, our housing demand. Um, it, it, we hope that that's creating opportunity for you to have a conversation with your clients that is more rooted in what's really happening and not the emotion of the experience you're having, where you're trying right. to go to market and feeling overwhelmed by either you know what you thought you could afford has changed because the interest rate changed or you expected that the prices were going to shift more rapidly than they did. Um, that, that type of research we hope is helping to enable a more factual based conversation for you. Indeed. And we have to remember too that Austin is a younger city on average. We have a higher proportion of younger folks and generally speaking you know those 20 something, 30 something year olds may not own a home yet so we still have that you know, kind of pent up demand from first time buyers, but part of the reason that it's not being alleviated, right, is just that we are in this higher rate environment and home prices are still high, sufficiently high that right. a lot of those buyers can't yet afford to enter the market for home ownership. I mean, right. we've talked before about, you know, a household essentially needs to be earning ninety to a hundred thousand dollars at least, right, just to be able to enter the market for home ownership. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to find a home that is affordable to them right. in a location that they desire. And where there's lots um, more capacity for housing and inventory than there was at those price classes where, where that entry level buyer is, is coming into Austin largely, that is where it has shrunk the most. You know, exactly. that, that, there's no capacity right. for that there. Yeah, we know that the affordable homes tend to be more so on the peripheries of the MSA and of course you know, the younger folks, we want, we want to live closer to the city. I love how I'm talking about younger folks as yeah. if I'm not, well, I'm not one of them. I was thinking to myself, I'm fairly sure that you could speak on that on the cohort's behalf. For, yeah, I'm for trying not sake, to just, least. you know, extrapolate my own desires. <laughs> That's all, uh, it's okay to project your desires here. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense that we, you know, in some cases the market was slowing and that was the experience that agents were having real time and that's fair and in other cases it's still an incredibly tight it very competitive enough. market yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 the competition was still fierce enough right what else did you feel like we faced this year so just the continued adjustment to post pandemic conditions yeah. and i mean this is something that we've touched on throughout our discussion but of course we just saw this exorbitant home price growth and sales activity during the pandemic that of course was not sustainable mm -hmm. on a long-term basis. And things really abruptly came to a halt, right? As mortgage rates continued to rise and yeah. starting in 2022 and then of course continuing into this year. But just in essence, you know, it's, it's taken our market a little while to, to kind of adjust to that shift yeah. in post pandemic conditions and to kind of settle down. And I think we're actually going to continue to see a little bit more settling into yeah. 2024. But overall, you know, just a year marked, of course, by change, not necessarily in the direction that we otherwise would have liked. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there again to just, it's been a few years of highs and lows, you know, and I, if we contextualize it, even in 2019 pre-pandemic, we were at a high. And then we just created excess on that high in every possible way and, and at a pace that was totally unsustainable long term. And then it stopped. <laughs> and so the, that experience on a human level as agents working in the, in the market was just very kind of harsh, I think, in 2023. And I hope that what we expect in 2024 is a less harsh, less volatile more uh, consistent pace heading into next year. Indeed. But we'll talk about that soon on a future episode. <laughs> yes, yes. Tune into the January 2nd edition of the Driving at Home podcast perfect. if you want to hear our predictions on 2024. Perfect, perfect. Well, anything else that you would help kind of mark for us in 2023? I think just overall that, you know, despite the adjustment to current conditions and the change in climate, 
you know, our members weathered this environment really well. And I was really, you know, um, it was really endearing to see just the level of optimism and hope among members this year and help me to, you know, you <laughs> have that optimism too. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Um, I, I would agree. I, I think uh, this, these are resilient people, our membership. I know that to be true. And I think we are amidst lots of change, not just economically, but as an industry, as well as an organization, we're amidst quite a bit of change. And with that will come great opportunity if that's how we approach it. And I think that we've tried to find those opportunities find for, silver lining yeah, for success in 2023. And kudos to each of you for navigating um, all of this change in a way that is not always easy. And we're proud of you guys for making it a great year despite all of the, the things that we faced. So. And too, we had you know, a win um, you know, early this month with the passage of you know, the uh, approval of the phase one of the home initiative. So there's, That's right. You know, a lot of hope ahead for potentially more housing supply in yeah. the market. And we'll, we'll cheers to a 24 that we hope is even better than 23. Indeed. <laughs> um, but kudos to your success. And Claire, thank you for all of your insight and expertise this year. I think you've brought tremendous value to our membership. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening and very happy holidays. We'll see you soon.